So in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about um, grain-sized distribution or particle-sized distribution within soils. So we know that soils have a range of particle sizes, and those can range from your boulder-sized particles, which is anything um, above 200 millimeters, uh, your cobbled, which is anything above between 200 and 60 uh, millimeters, 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 and you have gravels which are between uh, 2 millimeters and 60 millimeters, and then there's sand, which is anything above 63 micrometers and two millimeters. Then there's silt, which is anything above two micrometers and 63 micrometers. And then anything under that we talk call clay. So we have a range of particle sizes within soils um, and we can measure that, uh, that in a, a number of different ways. So anything above 63 microns we can measure through sieving Um, either dry sieving or wet sieving, where we uh, stack a series of decreasing aperture sieves on top of each other um, and uh, measure the mass of your, uh, put your sample into the top and shake it, and then measure the mass that's retained on each sieve. Um, anything below 63 microns, we can measure through sedimentation. Um, and that involves, um, well, first of all, sieving your sample through a 63 micron sieve and then taking that fine um, uh, material and immersing it in a liquid and measuring how quickly the, uh, the particles settle out. Um, the way we represent that data is on a, uh, a particle size um, a distribution graph. Um, and I'm just going to draw one up now. Um, there, are a, there are a number of different ways of representing the data, and I've put on my website, which is in the link uh, below in the description, um, a ternary diagram that uh, some soil scientists use to describe particle sizes within soils. And you might be able to see that there's a slight difference in the way that uh, geotechnical engineers represent uh, particle size distribution. So have a look at that link. Um, and I'm just going to uh, draw a, a typical particle size distribution on the board. Okay, so a, a typical uh, particle size distribution graph might look something like this, where on the y-axis you have cumulative percent passing, which um, is calculated by essentially adding the, the mass that's retained on each sieve as you go down through the sieve stack and expressing it as a percentage of the, the total. Um, and on the x-axis we have particle size. So, Let's say let's take a, line A for for example. What this is saying is that at I don't know something like twenty millimeters. So on the uh, x-axis we have millimeters, so around twenty millimeters. A hundred percent of the material is passing that that size. Now as we move down through the line, and let's say we get to around fifty percent, we can say that fifty percent of the material is passing maybe somewhere around two millimeters. And then eventually we come down to maybe 10% as passing 0.1 millimeters. So that's really what this, um, this, this graph is trying to communicate. Um, and it's quite useful for showing a, a range of different particle sizes uh, or particle size distributions. So um, line A, for instance, you might describe as something that's well graded. Well graded means that um, there's a, a wide range of particle size distribution. Um, whereas something that's more uniformly graded, like line B, um, well, we describe that as uniformly graded. Um, now, there's a, there's a, a, a rule for wh whether we describe something as, as uniformly graded or well graded, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, the first thing to point out is that we'd, we'd from this be able to determine uh, whether it's sand or a gravel or a cobble or a clay that we were talking about. And there's a set a bunch of rules um, in the standard for um, doing that. And I'm not going to go through that in too much detail, but it's really just um, the proportion of the material that's 
um, that, that you would describe that that's within the sized class that you're talking about. So if you've got let's say 100% of your material is within the sand size class, then there's no real argument there that you're talking about a sand. Um, if it's 100% within the clay, then it's definitely a clay. And um, mixtures between those two, or particle size distributions that fall between those two, you'd ha you'd have a mixture of those descriptors. So a clay, um, a sandy clay, or a, a silty clay, or a sandy gravel. Um, and I've put um, some links online and some resources on my website that help you um, create that that, um, that classification. Um, so line A we'd describe in this case as a um, as a coarse, um, well graded. Uh, sandy gravel, and you can kind of see that from just uh, eyeballing the the graph. You know, we know that um, gravel uh, sizes start and he here, and sand is sort of around here somewhere. So we know that there's sand and gravel within this, uh, this uh, in, within line A. So we, we definitely show that there must be a mixture between sand and gravel, um, and that's how we describe it. Um, line B, um, you can see that all of the size fraction exists within the sand. So you can say that you've got um, a uniform. Or sometimes that's called poorly graded, and sort of the opposite of well graded. Um, and it's either a sand, or maybe if we've got some um, some of the size fraction within the silt uh, um, classification, then it might be a, either a, a sand or a, a very slightly silty sand. So. Um, so it could be a sand or a silty sand. <laughs> we can see that C has a lot of um, the a lot of the material is uh, lower than what's even measured on the graph here. And we can see that a lot of that is in the the clay. So we can call that. Um, the well graded because we've got quite a, a, a wide uh, particle size distribution um, and we can say that either a well graded gravel or a, a very clay gravel because you've got a lot of the, the, the particle size material within the clay fraction. Um, and line D, well, there's not really too much argument. We either have a silty clay or a, a, a clay. So D would be a probably a well-graded clay. Now, there's a... Um, there's a formalized way of, of doing that, describing stuff as a, as a, a, a sand, clay, or gravel, and uh, do check out the link on my, my website. Um, but how do we um, come up with a, a more robust way of uh, to, um, determining whether these lines are graded or, uh, or well graded or poorly graded? Um, so there's a way to analyze that, um, and I'll just go through that now, so I'll just clear this up. Okay, so to uh, analyze whether, some, whether a particle size distribution is graded or, um, or poorly graded, um, the way we do this is through uh, two parameters, uh, the coefficient of uniformity and the coefficient of curvature. And there's a bunch of other ones as well um, that um, you could determine. Um, but really what they're trying to do is analyze the, the shape of this line to give you an idea of 
of how uh, broad the particle size range is. Um, so uh, the coefficient of uniformity is defined as the d60 over the d10. Now the d60 is the diameter at which 60% of the particles pass. So if we take 60% here, and let's say we're looking at line A, so we go through to line A, our d60 would maybe be around 8 millimetres. So in this case, for, for line A, it would be, say, 8 millimetres. And then the D10 is the diameter at which 10% of the material passes. And let's say that's, I don't know, somewhere 0 0.05. So for line A, our coefficient of uniformity, Cu, would be 160. So what does that mean? Well, a CU value um, of greater than um, 6 um, means that you've got something that's well graded. But be careful here because this changes depending on whether you're talking about a gravel or a sand. So just make sure that you're, you've got that part of the classification worked out first. Um, but so we can see that CU is telling us, um, at least for line A, that our, our material is well graded. Um, CU of smaller than 6 is poorly graded. Um, and that means essentially that the, the limits here, the, D, the difference between D60 and, um, and D10 are getting smaller. So we're moving from a, a line A to something that's more like a line B. So we'd have something that would be poorly graded um, for line B. So the coefficient of curvature, which is CZ, um, is your D30 squared over your d10 multiplied by your d60. Um, so the difference between these two is that coefficient of curvature is really trying to, to understand um, if there's any sort of dramatic changes within your, um, within your particle size distribution. So things like gap graded soils, it can be quite useful to deal with coefficient of curvature. Um, and it's giving you a point within this as well that uh, gives you a little bit more information. Um, a word of warning, though, is that small changes in, um, in your readings here, and that depending on if, you, if you're drawing this graph by hand or if you're analyzing it through, uh, through a computer software, can give you slightly different readings on your D60s, D10s, and D30s. And that can have a, a quite a um, pronounced impact on the... Um, on the, the, the results of your coefficient of uniformity or coefficient of curvature. So I, I suggest that you um, be careful about what, um, uh, uh, on the, the numbers that you're, 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 you're putting into these equations, and also uh, round up as well, and try and use a bit of common sense about interpreting, interpreting these, these, um, these values.